hey, Ryan, come with me. And Ryan doesn't and instead walks behind Butcher, which I'm like, if I'm Butcher, I'm like, thanks. <laughs> thanks, kid. <laughs> <laughs> you could have flown away. Oh, thanks. No, no. <laughs> Hey, Internet, it's Paul, it's Matt, the Dork Lords. We are here talking about The Boys season two finale, What I Know. All right, so we got to the end of this season. Uh, a lot happened in it. It was, uh, it was for a f season finale, I would say, you know, one of the, one of the better season finales uh, that I've witnessed generally, you know, stuff sure. happens, doesn't just like put stuff off. We open, on a, uh, a very fun um, how to survive a supervillain attack in your school. Yes, 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 um, yes. Where <laughs> I, my favorite part of it was where he's like, all right, your teacher will have a gun, da, 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 but use whatever you can. And there's these yeah. kids with an American <laughs> flag. <laughs> Stab the hero with an American flag. That's how you yeah. survive. We then end with... Uh, Victoria Newman being revealed as kind of one of the big bads of the show. She blows up uh, Goran Viznich, the leader of the collective's head, yeah. and then Huey promptly joins her campaign, and that's <laughs> the end of the season. The Billy Joel song was not Uptown Girl. We made predictions <laughs> earlier in the season. What would be the next <laughs> Billy Joel song? It was uh, Only the Good Die Young, which yeah. seems obvious now in retrospect but so be it um that was their their tie-in oh also i'll just say on on that note got a huge drop for like season three season four who knows but when we learn we know we learn about huey's mom where starlight's like oh i thought she was dead and he's like no no she just disappeared one day when i was six and she never wrote and never Ooh. called, like, okay. <laughs> well, that's going to come back around. <laughs> like, okay. Turns uh, out my mom is Chekhov. Yeah. Right. Um, if you introduce a missing mother, that missing mother has to go off. <laughs> we open this episode, it's the president uh, is going to basically issue Compound V to a whole bunch of folks to try to counteract Soup Terrace. I don't know if it's like... Give, give Compound V to everybody, but some, I don't know. No, army, no, 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 no. I think know? they decide, yeah, probably people in the army or they'll decide, I guess, more people. Right. They just figure out who to, who to give it to, but basically up the number of soups so that there are good soups uh, to handle the bad soups. Mallory and Victoria Newman, who we still at this point is not revealed as the big bad, uh, are trying to tell the Secretary of Defense... Mm. Who, by the way, more, uh, more on this later, but a dude from Supernatural, the show, uh, comes around. We'll talk about more about that later. Um, but but so Mallory and uh, Newman are trying to say, hey, look, it's a Vought trick. The head exploding Senate hearing thing was a Vought trick. And Secretary's like, look, the only way that we can stop this is if Jesus or Homelander uh, basically, you know, makes a statement saying, yep, Vought, it was all Vought the whole time. Uh, yeah. So that's kind of the premise for this episode. How do you get the Homelander to say, yep, it was Vaught, um, uh, which is what happens. Yeah, and, you know, it's pretty key considering that, you know, she revealed that um, at least to um, shift blame, her chief of staff blew up. Let's, let's talk about this real fast. So, so right, Newman is the, the head-blowing up person. Yeah. Um, First of all, before we get into you know, why, why, what, what is her end game? Other than I assume she like wants to raise in the ranks of power, and you know, this is my track to be president, maybe. But what is the, what's the the, the short term goal? How does, how does doing what she did accomplish her goals? Yeah, I don't know? know. We don't know what her goals are. Okay. Right. I mean, initially. It was to have, or I should say by the end of it, she does have an organization that is, uh, she is a part of it actually, the organization that watches them. So maybe Good it's point. a way to do a hostile of takeover of them or something. Um, and certainly, you know, I mean, I think we had theorized that uh, Edgar uh, had superpowers, but it really doesn't seem like it at all. Um, you know, he's just smart I mean, enough to know how to play uh, Homelander. She, she being uh, Newman is is getting V somehow, probably through Vought, 
So, why? In fact, he... if you remember back in well, earlier in the season when Rainer, uh, her head, her head's the first head to explode, and she's yes. in the in the middle of talking about Vought in like a parking lot to yes. the boys. So that probably means Victoria Newman was hanging out in the shadows and like she's talking yeah. about Vought. So that seems to me that she's working in concert with Vought is my, it's just all. She she seems to, you know, all of what she's been saying mm -hmm. is it's against Vought, but if she's taking V and it seems to be all the people that are talking against Vought's head explode, is there, is she secretly wished them? You're assuming that she's taking V and not that she's just another Vought uh, hero that was, you know, that was inoculated as a child. Oh, in other words, maybe she holds it as a grudge against them. Like, you screwed me over as a kid, and now I'm taking it just out. Just that she had the power, and now she's just using it for her own, you know, own means, you know. Okay, all right. So all right. she didn't attempt to be one of the seven or attempt to be that group, but she has the powers. Um, I mean, it's possible that she took it, but we don't know that. You know, I mean, for know. instance, if you were going with the idea, the conspiracy idea that she is somehow linked secretly to Vought, the yeah, I don't fact think that so. she blew up the head of the collective's head, <laughs> the head collective, um, would somewhat go with that theory in that he is that'd saying, be a, hey, I got that'd a whole be a waste, that'd be a waste of Ed, That'd be a waste of Edgar's time. Why would he even talk to him then if he had somebody who would end up blowing him up? The reason he gets his head blown up is he's like, hey, I got information on more soups. And also, you got to do that thing for me where you get a and, special you know, tax status. And then it's like, yeah, that makes all his actions ridiculous. Why meet with, I mean, yeah, it okay. doesn't make any sense to me if, if uh, I mean, maybe. Uh, I don't know. Edgar it's just, it's odd. I'm trying, I can't Newman, see. But I don't think so. Yeah, I think we haven't seen what her plan is yet. Okay, all right. That's all. So what she's up to. Her plan is mysterious. You know? If you know of uh, Victoria Newman's plan, uh, yes. please put it in the comments loyal yeah. viewers. I did think about this too though. It's like when we see her blow up uh, Goran Vizinch's head, uh, we yeah. see her eyes do the little womp 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 thing. Um, so that made me think, well, wouldn't her eyes have been doing that for like <laughs> like a minute straight <laughs> during that Senate hearing? And it's being televised so it was all on camera. You would think she would have given herself away. I don't know. It, it, was she wearing contacts? Was she like Somehow she has another power that like, makes her eyes not glow when she doesn't want them to. I don't know. Uh, that seemed to be a little odd, little plot uh, inconsistency there, but so be it. Yeah, that's one of those things where you have to go back and then see, you know, are we looking at her in her eyes when somebody is, you know, at the same time okay, as somebody I felt like we were, but like, okay. Boom! Ah! Oh! Yeah. I, mm, mm. Like, like, in other words, boom. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, I have a headache. Uh, oh, what yeah. happened? Anybody? Oh, the, uh, the blood. The sunglasses on. Things. Uh, oh. Yeah. <laughs> I have to wear shades because I'm crying. <laughs> My um, feet are so bright. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I do have to wear shades. Um, you were, uh, I think, more on board with this than I was, so I'm, I'm giving you credit on that Becca was indeed Martha. You know, I was on board. Your 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 theory of the case was strong, and I was like, "Yeah, okay, you, you make a good a good case that Becca is probably going to get killed off uh, to give inspiration to our perhaps hero in training, Ryan." Yeah. Um, what was interesting too is we we both we both had theories that were correct, but we didn't realize both of our theories would be correct. <laughs> so, um, uh, you thought, "Hey, maybe." Ryan will finally use his powers against Stormfront in order to protect or avenge his mom, which he did. Right. And I right. was concerned that maybe he would use his powers and accidentally kill his mom, uh, which he also did. So uh, <laughs> we, we got the double way we just didn't put it together, didn't synthesize yeah, yeah. Yeah. the theories. So Ryan, uh, essentially Anakin Skywalker's Stormfront, to the point that her limbs are off. <laughs> She's just sitting there with that same completely, you know, uh, ashen body. Um, she's mumbling German. I, I looked it up. Um, she's mumbling just uh, about a memory with her, her girl, her little daughter. Her family was hanging wow. out underneath some apple trees. And that's uh. what she's, she's remembering this thing. Talking, talking to an invisible Frederick Vaught.
Ah. Um, so, but she almost certainly is in season three. They had a little promo for season three, and she was in it. So, what do we see as the the version of Stormfront that we see in season three? What 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 is that going to look like? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if um, you know. I can't imagine that she would still remain a part of Vought. You know, right? Or, or the unless, seven, unless she's unless she wears a. You know, I mean, uh, Black Noir is able to get around with. That's uh, true. You know, I don't That's know true. that they ever show Black Noir's face, but she can't have the influence she had. You know, uh, so it's a question of whether or not she's able to continue. Um, right. They say like, Homelander says she's at an undisclosed location. I mean, I assume she almost maybe comes back, much like if they went, if they're going the Darth Vader route, she almost maybe comes back with a lo- bunch of mechanical parts, perhaps. You know, she's like mm. steampunk front. So, um, <laughs> will she be a villain, or will it just be a Vought's like, look, we'll just put a mask on you, and you can still be, you can still ride with the team. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, if they're uh, following the trend that um, you know <laughs> of mirroring, uh, showing the different aspects of our current culture in the show, um, you know, maybe she's just uh, in charge of a vigilante group. You know. That uh, is critical of Vought, um, and that's true. That's true. you know, so she'd be a, a proud girl. She, a Stormfront was a member of a like an offshoot group in the comics, so that actually would make sense. Yeah. Um, and the way that she gets found out is A Train uh, steals the information about her from the Collective. They had been doing tracking her whereabouts and stuff and so gives that information to starlight in order to get stormfront kicked out because stormfront is a yes. racist and a train yes. can't get back into the seven as long as there's this huge racist uh on the team um yeah so that's an, an uh, that's really the main i would say the main effect of having col- the collective in involved in the plot this season yes was that yes. moment a train yes. steals the information on stormfront Yes. And Stormfront's kicked out of the seven. Like that. That's what the. That's what the collector right. was there for. Right. Uh, yeah. It's like you. Like oh, the we wouldn't. Ha- the Vought wouldn't have any records of you know the people in there. No, they wouldn't have any records. You need somebody who you know is a, or outside of Vought to keep records. <laughs> we had that scene where uh, Kamiko, Starlight, and May beat the hell out of Stormfront. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Girls get it done. Um, yeah. <laughs> and leading up to that scene, you know, they're like, oh, is it? <laughs> Maeve's like, hey, Kraut, <laughs> whatever. Anyway, but like, yeah. they're like, you're a Nazi <laughs> and you're terrible. And it's interesting. I mean, it's believable. I'm not saying it's not believable, but it's interesting how Stormfront continues to defend, like, nope, you got, no, those, those are fakes. Those pictures are fakes. Yes, yes. And it's right. not me. And I know what you're talking about. Right. I mean, She's not. It's not public. It's not like she's making a statement no. to Twitter. No, she's talking to no. people that are literally like, "We know the truth." Yeah, yeah, and she's yeah. like, "No, I don't know what you're talking about. It's not me." It's just interesting well, that she well, can't even. Well, I mean, you know, it's worth. Point. I think it's worth embellishing. She said, um, "You know, everybody agrees with me. They still don't like the word Nazi." Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. They just you, you throw in that poison word, and suddenly, oh, it's whoa, all whoa, whoa, terrible. whoa! I'm just against blacks and Jews. I'm. Yeah. Not, what, what, uh, what, I'm not a Nazi. <laughs> I mentioned that the Secretary of Defense being a part of the show Supernatural is related to something else. Yes. That something else is that Soldier Boy, hero from the comics, uh, uh, is going to be introduced in Season 3. And that's going to be played by Jensen Ackles, who, uh, obviously, main character from Supernatural. So Supernatural sure. is working its way into the boys. Soldier Boy is a version of Captain America, created back in the 40s. I, I'm going to guess they put the guy on ice, much like Captain America, and then maybe they wake him up because they need more members of the Seven. I don't know. We do see a statue to him in this season at one point, so they're they're just mm. throwing out little hints of, of him. Um, so anyway, Soldier Boy, coming back, mm. coming in Season mm-hmm. 3. So the current members of the Seven would be Homelander, Maeve, Starlight, Soldier Boy... And then maybe Black Noir. He's in a coma A-train. still from the Almond Joy. A train, A train's back. So you got the... you got maybe you got five, and then maybe Black Noir if he comes out of the coma makes six. 
perhaps. Mm. It's funny. Yeah, I initially uh, was thinking like, you know, they do have a bunch of empty seats. Um, and I've forgotten that uh, it's Edgar's. Uh, only one has been per group. Uh, per, per allowed in I did like that. Time. that That's the, the has been quota they have. So. Yes, yes. Uh, Stan Edgar's like, look, you know, one person, one coming back is a cool story. Two coming back, uh, that's weakness. So, no, we're not. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and who's, who's the odd man out? Again, it's the deep. Uh, yes. The deep is now <laughs> firmly implanted as the comic relief guy that nothing ever works out for. He spent all this time working, you know, playing the part in the collective, and he has that thing at the end. He's like, I did all these things for you. I gave you my bank account. Uh, you guys are terrible. <laughs> um, so, yeah, uh, didn't work out. And now that the collective's leader's head has exploded, that's probably the end of the yes. collective experience. Um, so the deep is, uh, is out again. I, I could imagine a scenario where... You know, they keep they keep playing him off and keep playing him off. At some point, maybe like end of season three, there's some aquatic problem they have to solve, and and the deep saves the day because he's like the last person you'd suspect that would actually come and be helpful in some moment. But anyway, he's on some journey. It seems pointless at this point, but you know who knows. Interesting that you're not uh, queuing up as a potential villain. You certainly you know uh, begrudged enough. No, that's true. That's true. An outcast. He's outcast enough that he'd be like, yeah. "All right, hell with this. I'm not playing to try to get back in the seven. I'm going to try to take out the seven, um, which necessarily isn't necessarily a villain in this show, but whatever." <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> uh, one of the biggest uh, moral choices in the show is in the in this episode is Butcher, right? So Butcher makes this deal with Mr. Edgar. Vaught has lost control of Ryan because right. Homelander took him so right. uh, Butcher reasons that Vought wants to have control of Ryan uh, and so it's like look if you can tell me where he is I'll get him for you um, and that's the deal he makes well then later Becca kind of senses he might be <laughs> not so fond of Ryan and maybe doesn't mind trading him in and so she makes him promise promise me that you won't just turn him into, you know, Vought. And so he makes that promise. And then in the end, even though it seems like he's going along with the, I'll just say I promise, um, he does live up to his word. He makes the hard choice to rescue Ryan instead. Right, because it, uh, it looks like he's going to try to kill him before Homelander comes around. Yeah, it's like he's right. About to that's that's the moment where poor Ryan, because as yeah. you put it, originally it's not a hundred percent clear that Ryan killed Becca because her body isn't right. as burned nearly as burned as yeah, no. say uh, Stormfront. But yeah, and that's the moment. Strangely, where you're like, oh, yeah, he did strangely, it. Strangely, well, I guess he wasn't in contact with them, but Butcher was pretty damn close to them. <laughs> he was close. You're right. He's just fine right. though. If he was like aiming more at Butcher and <laughs> and, right. and uh, Stormfront, he would have been all right. <laughs> His mom would have been fine. Butcher, no, wouldn't have been so hot, but you know. That's true, that's true. If you just went Priorities. left instead of right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, uh, you cut a little close there, Ryan. Um, it's interesting, too, though, because, you know, his dad seems to have the same problem with, like, controlling the eye rays, apparently, is like a big deal. Uh, you know, you use that power, and something bad seems to happen every time. Um, so, like father, like son. Um, but yeah, so Butcher is, you see that he get, it all gets dark and he grabs the crowbar and yeah, I think the, certainly the implication from that scene is he is so angry at Ryan for killing, accidentally killing Becca that he's going to go hit him with a crowbar, yes. which you're like, yes. dude, okay, that's not going to do anything. I mean, yeah. you will die doing that, but okay. Uh, you know, if that's, well, maybe the guilt, you know, would have uh, caused him to uh, to not fight. Yeah, yeah. So, so that is a very tense moment there, where you know, Homelander shows up. Homelander has just killed off a whole bunch of Vought goons, 
Yes. Um, <laughs> with like that, oh, this is not going to go well. And it doesn't. And he's got their blood all over his face. And so he's like, hey, Ryan, come with me. And Ryan doesn't and instead walks behind Butcher. Which I'm like, if I'm Butcher, I'm like, thanks. <laughs> thanks, kid. <laughs> <laughs> he could have flown away. Oh, thanks. No, no. They put me between. So in that moment, there is zero chance that Butcher can survive that that oh, yeah. I mean, it's about to come, and Butcher is about to be lasered. Right. Um, but Maeve shows up and basically blackmails him. Um, my question on the blackmail, because it's the, it's the uh, uh, plane incident from season one. Right. It, it seems like they, they could just use that in perpetuity now. They could just bring that up any time yeah. they want Homelander to do something. Yeah. Yeah. It feels like that, that couldn't hold. You'd have to say, like, all right, if you do this for me... I'll delete all the footage, or uh, not just like, yep, you're screwed for life. You'll yeah. do whatever I say. Uh, yeah. I, well, I mean, I yeah, and I think uh, they, that's acting as a, you know, a neutering him, basically. I, the last scene of him merely masturbating. Um, right. Public, although in a place that people generally don't look for Homelander. Um, now, supposedly <laughs> that scene was originally filmed not... in season one. Oh. And it was actually removed by Amazon because they thought it's a little too, a little risque. Huh. So I, it, it may even be the exact same scene. They may have just I like... I wonder if, wonder what the original plan was for... Uh, yeah. So Elizabeth Shue had apparently just gotten one over on him and so that was like a reaction to him like, I can do whatever I want. And so like, yes. that was where that fit in in season one. Um, so I I wouldn't be surprised if they just basically took that exact same footage and decided, you know what, this is appropriate now, let's do it. And so they moved it to, you know, post, post Homelander having to publicly say, oh, Maeve and Starlight, they're great. Stormfront was Madeline the real Stillwell. villain. So he has to publicly, you know, denounce Stormfront, who he, in his own weird way, loved, I guess. Uh, and he has to like publicly acknowledge that Maeve and Starlight are great folks when they're just blackmailing the hell out of him. Yes. Um, and so he's not in control. And so, so yeah. They brought yeah, I mean, uh, you know, that gives, I think, um, quite a large amount of power to the two of them anyway yep. that yep. Uh, you typically wouldn't want to give over a character. You know, it makes it, you know... Um, I would presume he would still look for his son, I guess. I mean, I'm not sure what he does in the next season. But then he was really reactive in this one anyway, right? So, you know, he was still trying to um, get over Stillwell's death, or killing her anyway. Um, and initially he was upset over uh, Stormfront trying to take over the group until, you know, she revealed himself to be perfect for him. So... He's been reacting for quite some time, actually. That's a good point. You know, that's a good point. His last action of seeding V around, you know, has been over since the beginning of the season. So, I have a feeling there'll be a little bit more of him finding a way to reclaim his alpha status. Yeah, in some way, you know, either a um, finding a way to uh, neutralize the footage of him. Um, or, you know, somehow they just, you know, figure out a way to, to end his character, I guess. Well, it'll be interesting, too. I mean, Soldier Boy, obviously uber patriotic. If he's Captain America, I mean, that's kind of Homelander's shtick. So it'll be interesting to have, like, hey, we have a new patriotic hero that you can follow. Soldier Boy. Like, oh, yeah, this guy. I don't know. Anyway. And he's, he's like, he's older than Homelander, so he outranks him, maybe. I don't know. That kind of thing. <laughs> like, oh. Well, I mean, Captain America. Captain America is not, you know, equivalent of power to, uh, you know, to yeah. Superman. So, well, as we get to the end of season two, there's, you know, the state of things. Like, for instance, for the boys, they no longer have to live in a basement. Right. Yeah, they've been completely exonerated, which is an interesting choice. Yep, they're all free of all charges. Um, Butcher has been asked to join this like special task force that Mallory's running about soups. Um, you know, we see Kamiko and Frenchie kind of run off together. 
We see Mother's Milk go and re reunited with his family. It almost, and then Huey goes and you know tries to do politics. So it almost feels like the boys are breaking up in some mm. way. Um, that obviously won't hold. But what do we do? We see that the boys are still intact, or are they like, all right, we're done spreading out thing? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, uh, I guess Vaught is still a threat. Um, so it just becomes a question of how. Uh, butcher proceeds in the future. I mean, presumably he'd still work with, um, you know, that Mallory. group. Yeah, with Mallory. Well, here's what it might be: is like they're all out doing, they're on solo careers, and then at some point they got to get the band back together. You know, it's kind of one of those mm. scenes. Right. Yeah. 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 Son of a bitch. Right. 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 I'm but I guess initially, though, I guess initially, though, right? They're uh, they're on the senator's side, so. Um, right. Well, Huey is for sure. So Huey uh, probably his right, but you know, association they're, with they're, her is going to figure associ- out. Right, and their group that you know looks after the uh, you know the uh, the Vought as the superheroes. There's a check on them. I think we jokingly guessed that Newman maybe did the head popping last uh, recap, but we weren't. Oh, did we? About <laughs> she played it well. She yes. She looked she did. distraught. She enough. did. Threw us off. She uh, wore it well, Pierre Cardet. Yeah. Becca's dead. Stormfront is alive ish. Um, Black Noir is still alive. Um, I don't know. Does anybody else die that we've got? Uh, oh, uh, well, the collective guy is dead. Um, yes. I think all our major players are still. Heading other than Becca, our major players are still in some, some form or fashion alive. Heading into sure. season three. Yeah. Any final thoughts, good sir? No, no, no. Uh, all in all, I, th- I enjoyed this season. Um, yeah. It. I mean, uh, it has some difficult, uh, you know, problems with the characters in terms of um, maintaining. Uh, you know, because it doesn't feel like there's a greater arc. Um, until we know what's going on with, uh, you know, uh, that congresswoman. Until we know what's going on with her, I can't, I, I don't have a sense of what a greater arc is. So, I mean, it's possible, though, they're just sort of like, okay, how are we going to end this season? And they don't have a greater story in mind, which is fine. Um, but, uh, yeah, so I thought they did a good job this season, keeping it all interesting. Yeah, I thought it actually even improved as the season went on. Um, mm. I thought it actually got stronger and stronger as as the season rolled toward a conclusion. So, anytime your season can do that, I think that's a that's a good sign. Yeah. Um, so uh, so yeah, I enjoyed it. Uh, we'll be back covering season three when whenever that drops. Um, in the meantime, we're finishing up uh, Lovecraft Country, talking about episodes nine and ten, and then we're going to start talking about uh, Star Trek Discovery, I believe. You. That is uh, dropping soon, and we've talked about. We've recapped seasons one and two, uh, so uh, why wouldn't we cover season three? (laughs) So uh, come on back for that. Uh, Thank you, Paul, as always. Good, sir. Um, And uh, we'll see you guys next time. Bye.